Good afternoon from Los Angeles. It's Wednesday, April 24th. I'm Melissa Coram here with Ken Shreve, and we have a look at the stock market today. On today's show, we're going to be talking about three stocks. We have KLA 10 Core, Canadian Pacific, as well as Ollie's Bargain Outlet. But first, let's take a look at the major indexes. We finished with mild losses across the board. The NASDAQ and the S&P 500 falling about one-tenth of a percent. The Dow down about two-tenths of a percent. Small caps out performing again but what would you uh, say was was some of the big takeaways from this session? Well, I think overall it was uh, constructive. All the indexes are up near highs. Uh, they're holding near highs. They're not showing a lot of volatility. So I think the overall market health here still looks pretty good. The NASDAQ actually hit an all-time high today, rose about uh, six points over mm -hmm. its late August uh, high of 81.33. So it did back off by the close. But you mentioned the small caps. I mean, this is an index that has been you know, had been lagging for a while while the NASDAQ and S&P 500 were showing strength. And now the Russell 2000 index is in position for a, a breakout a try. So overall, the market looks good here. Uh, we ended with mild losses, a lot of good earnings reports, and a lot of good setups still out there. Exactly. Underneath the surface, uh, some nice moves on earnings. And we are watching some key stocks reporting results after the close today. Uh, so we'll be keeping tabs on that throughout the show, see if there's any early movement there. But uh, the first stock we want to take a look at is KLA 10 Core, a chip equipment maker. Ticker there is KLAC. It finished the day up about 2%, and it's now decidedly above a handle buy point of 124.78. And earnings are coming out May 6th after the close, and it's had um, quite a few quarters now of strong earnings growth. Yeah, I mean, KLA 10 Core is one of the strong performers in the chip equipment group. Um, it uh, I'll tell you, the, the chip stocks have been working for a while now. It was all the way back on March 15th where the, the VanEck uh, Vectors mm -hmm. Semiconductor ETF, probably the most one of the more liquid semiconductor ETFs out there, uh, that was kind of a mid-March uh, breakout, and they've been moving higher every ever since. So you look through the NASDAQ 100 today, some of the top 10 percentage gainers, you're going to see KLA 10 core, analog devices, a whole bunch of chip stocks uh, outperforming today. So, you know, you got transports outperforming, you've got semiconductor stocks outperforming. Right. You've got you know, pretty good uh, ingredients uh, you know, for a, a bull market here. Exactly. All of those things bode very well uh, for the uptrend. And now let's move on and talk about Canadian Pacific, uh, which finished the day up about 2.4% in heavy volume here, vying for a breakout over a consolidation. And uh, it reported earnings here. So positive results, uh, which is a good thing for the economy. Yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. Canadian Pacific, uh, good earnings today, and also uh, Norfolk, Southern. Norfolk uh, Southern. We had a bunch of good earnings reports in the railroad space uh, last week. So uh, Dow Jones uh, Transports, another day of outperformance uh, today. So, yeah, I mean, there's a talk in recent weeks about a you know possible slowdown for the U.S. economy. Is there going to be a recession in 2020? Is, is there going to be one later this year? But when you see the railroad stocks acting the way they are, they're moving yeah. a lot of a lot of goods around the country, and uh, it's just really a, a good sign about the overall health of the U.S. economy to see the railroad stocks doing so well here. That's right. So um, a breakout for Canadian Pacific, and then Norfolk Southern actually reached that 20% profit-taking zone after a breakout not too long ago. So uh, some some pretty good-looking names in the transport. Yeah, group. I mean, all the all the railroad stocks specifically are, have, have all broken out. They're all holding their highs and uh, had pretty good things to say fundamentally uh, during a lot of recent earnings reports. All right. And on the retail front, Ollie's Bargain Outlet gained about 2.8% in above average turnover today, vying for a breakout <laughs> of its own over a consolidation here. Uh, we won't get earnings for for a little while longer for Ollie's, uh, expected in early June, but uh, a nice move here today, nonetheless, for the retail company. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about, you know, strength in semiconductor stocks and transport and the the retailers are still very strong as well, but mm -hmm. it's a pretty select group. I mean, Lululemon had its right. analyst day today, five below, Ulta Beauty, throw in Ollie's Bargain Outlet uh, to a very well-run uh, retailer. Uh, I think the closest 
Ollie's Bargain Outlets uh, to California are in Texas, so we don't we don't have many Ollie's Bargain Outlets in in California, but uh, uh, they have a pretty pretty good presence in Texas and along the eastern uh, seaboard. But excellent fundamentals and a, a nice little breakout is trying to clear a consolidation with a 9771 uh, entry. So I'm sure we're going to continue to see nice mm -hmm. uh, earnings reports in the retail sector as well. Yeah, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that. It is a <coughs> big big week for earnings this week uh, and in the early going we'll take a look at a couple of names that uh, reported after the close so, so far Xilinx is down uh, just a hair about about a half a percent mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to look at the, the other ones that we're watching but in the meantime can uh, you talk a little bit about uh, you know what we see after hours maybe not necessarily translate to the next day although sometimes it it does like with with iRobot today yeah yeah I mean the after hours can be uh, tricky but you always want to look at uh, trading volume sometimes when a stock is trading 200 300 400 thousand shares in, in after hours it's right. pretty liquid you get a pretty good idea of where the stock is trading but a lot of moves in uh, after hours uh, are in light volume so mm -hmm. um, I think it's uh, still early with uh, with Xilinx and uh, so we'll see that's that's been a big winner on leaderboard so uh, we've had that on our leaders list for quite some time had a really healthy profit cushion in that name right. so we could kind of yeah. sit, sit through earnings and uh, uh, so we'll see. That's right and service now also down just fractionally um, right now so at investors.com we will have the latest on these and more earnings reports it's a it's a huge week for earnings but overall the sentiment uh, seems to be pretty favorable. You know top rated growth stocks in IBD's database whether it's ServiceNow, Chipotle, Xilinx there's a whole bunch of them all our growth screens uh, uh, have uh, companies with outstanding fundamentals, and you tend to see pretty good earnings reports from uh, from top-rated stocks. So we're going to have uh, you know three that we're looking at after the close today, and of course we've got Amazon uh, reporting mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, and that's. Uh, been, been holding strong and acting well, so we'll see. And with good earnings reports comes uh, good buying opportunities a lot of the times, and so a topic that we're going to be talking about in the podcast this week, hosted by our very own Chris Gessel and Justin Nielsen, uh, will be going over how to play stocks uh, heading into earnings using options, something that you are very familiar with, Ken. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, strategy. Sometimes they can uh, present these low-risk, uh, high-reward uh, trades, mm -hmm. which is is always a good position to, to be in. If you can you know, make a, a fair amount of money without a, a big investment, that's uh, sometimes a very compelling proposition. That's right. So Chris and Justin will be going into further detail on that uh, for our Investing with IBD podcast. And that uh, new episode will drop tomorrow. So make sure you head to investors.com slash podcast for all the details on that. And then we also have a webinar tomorrow uh, about swing trading happening at 11 a.m. Pacific, so head to investors.com slash webinar for all the details on that. Thanks for watching, everyone, and be sure to head to investors.com for all the latest uh, stock market news, earnings news. We've got it all for you there. And you can also check out our content across social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.